Hi everyone, welcome to this Fain online event. I'm Anna Jones, I'm a um, cookbook author and food writer, and I am very, very pleased to be here talking to my very good friends, Henry and Ian, who are of course Bosch, um, and we're celebrating the launch, well, it's not a launch, it's been out for a little while, hasn't it? But this incredible new book, Bosch on a Budget, which I have been... Um, leafing through at home over the last month or so. Um, it's an absolute banger, guys. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. We're so proud of it. I'm uh, glad you like it. It means a lot coming from you. Yeah. Well, yeah, you've done it again. You've done it again. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it is amazing. This is what your fifth that, book? Yeah, is your fifth book? Fifth, yeah. Yeah. So uh, well, we've got the, the original one, then Bish Bash Bosch, then Healthy Vegan, then Speedy. And then that one is the fifth book, uh, cookbook, but then we also have the manual How to Live Vegan. Yeah. Wild. Good memory. Yeah. Wild. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I love this book. I love it for lots of reasons. Well, I love you guys. I love your ethos. You know, I love what you've done to bring kind of vegan food to the forefront in this country. Um, but yeah, it's just, it feels a really friendly, approachable book. And I think that's what I connect with about your food, your cooking, you as people. Um, uh, but but what this book kind of is focused on is is cooking on a budget, mm -hmm. isn't it? And um, you know, I can I can vouch for the fact that the recipes are easy, they're delicious, they're what you would expect from you guys from Bosch. Um, but you know, they are. You know, why did you think it was kind of an important time for yeah. this book about budget cooking? I suppose we've just been through COVID this crazy 2020, 2021 era when we all started wearing face masks. And that has brought with it all of these, all of this weirdness and all of this uncertainty. Mm. Some industries have completely shut down. If you're in hospitality or travel, mm. you might have moved out of that or you might have had like quite a bad time. And, um, you know, whilst a lot of people have been working from home, it, a lot of people will have been counting the pennies a lot more just because of the uncertainty. But also because they're at home, it meant they had time to cook. So we realized that budget-friendly cooking was going to be important. It was something that a lot of people were asking us about. Mm -hmm. How do you cook with lentils on your store cupboard ingredients yeah, when there's yeah, no yeah. food left yeah, on the shelves? Yeah. But, um, but also cooking was something that people were spending more time on. And so it gave us the ability to think about things like batch cooking, mm -hmm. uh, feeding the freezer, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, using those pantry ingredients, etc. So we really wanted to distill all of that into a book. But also the other thing that we're all about is dispelling myths about vegan food. Mm -hmm. So the first book, Bosch, was about showing that vegan food can be delicious mm -hmm. because everyone thought it was boring. <laughs> we made healthy vegan because a lot of people were saying vegan food was unhealthy. Yeah. It doesn't yeah, have to yeah, be. Absolutely. It can be if you eat all the processed food, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be if you eat a broad, beautiful colored rainbow diet. And this one is all about showing that vegan food can be affordable. Mm -hmm. You don't have to buy those sausages that cost £2.50 per sausage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't have to buy any of the products in the supermarket, including ours. Mm -hmm. You can just <laughs> focus on good quality vegetables and ingredients, bought in season, as you know yeah, all about, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and cook stuff that is pocket friendly. Yeah. And, you know, I was amazed when I was reading it. So you thought about kind of putting, you know, price points on all of these dishes. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, you know, that's tricky because people shop in different supermarkets and people have their favorites that they want to buy, don't they? And for some people, organic is important for other people. Budget is important. So I think it's really smart that you kind of, you know, left that quite fluid. Yeah. But you estimate that these are kind of one or two pounds a portion, which is that is you know, yeah. super affordable. It, it would be hard to go out and buy food or make any food for cheaper than that, wouldn't it? That's true, yeah. I mean, some people might say, oh yeah, two quid is still quite a lot, but it's really not. Because if you imagine that you're going to order takeaway just for yourself, it's going to cost you. 15 16 quid mm -hmm. so like two pounds is actually like very very good yeah. and it's a it, like it's 10 pounds for all of your dinners throughout the whole course of the week so um so yeah like you say we didn't want to sort of put a, a specific figure on the amount of money that we wanted to hit because that book is sold in different territories as well yeah so like yeah. what's cheap over here might be slightly more expensive in the states so we kind of just wanted everything to just be reasonably priced or yeah. actually like quite well pressed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think, you know, and, and and the thing I felt flicking through this was that, as you say, it, it feels really generous. Mm. It feels, first of all, it's a beautiful book. Um, Thank and, you. Um, 
you you actually had some friends of mine, didn't you? Helping Lizzie did the photos. Yeah, yeah. So such an amazing team. Um, Lizzie Mason. Lizzie Mason. That's and Rose, right. And Rosie Ramsden is That's a really right. good friend of mine yeah, who yeah. did help with the food styling and stuff. But it's it just kind of jumps off the page, but it yeah. feels really, really generous. And I think, mm. you know, you've got a double whammy, haven't you? Because quite often there's preconceptions around vegan food, there's preconceptions around budget food, um, but you've kind of, you're, you're, you're doubly disproving yeah. it, this, aren't you? Which, which just feels, yeah, it feels amazing. Yeah. What I also loved, um, you know, there does seem to be more of a focus on kind of seasonal stuff. Here. Mm. You've got, mm. you know, you, you've listed spring, summer, autumn, winter ingredients. Why was that important, more important to you in this book? Do you know, we listen to the people that comment on our social media videos, and we've had a lot of people talking to us about seasonal food, and in none of the previous books have we talked about seasonality. Mm. The minute you come to talk about budget-friendly food, you have to look at the seasonality, because yeah. things are going to be more affordable when they're in season, mm -hmm. and they're going to taste better and be healthier. Also, we're all about the planet. That's why we do what we do. So if you are getting that food that's in season, it's going to hopefully have traveled a little bit less mm -hmm. far. Um, and so and taste better, right? And taste better, exactly. Yeah, exactly. All of those 100%. things. So I think it was really important for us to talk about that. Seasonality can be difficult for the mm. same reasons. You know, when you're talking about selling books in North America or maybe you're selling books in Australia, which we mm -hmm, do, mm -hmm. seasonality does differ. So we've had a quite a broad brush approach yeah. to seasonality. Yeah. But yeah, we've got seasonal soups in there, seasonal smoothies. And also we try and give people information about what's going to be in season yeah. and not in season. Mm. And it's so cool that you're mates with Lizzie Mason, by the uh, way. She's, yeah. she's awesome. She's not only done this book, she's done every single one of our books. Has she? Yeah. And she, I would say that hopefully we'll get to work with her forever. Yeah. Well, it's such, um, it's such a thing, isn't it? Because you, you know, you're at home, you write all these recipes mm. and I'd love to chat to you a bit more in a minute about that kind of creative process. But um, you know, and, and it feels very much yours, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, all the recipes in the book. And then all of a sudden you hand over kind yes, of to this yeah. creative team. And I know that I, you know, I was a food stylist before, so I'm, I'm always, do you style your I books? style my do you own do books, your book? but, yeah. so I have a bit more control, but for you guys, you're really handing this very yeah, yeah, precious yeah, yeah. kind over. of like book baby over to someone to yeah. kind of yeah. turn it into something mm. beautiful and visual. So the team mm. is really important. And, and, you know, I really feel like, you know, they've, yeah. They, along with you, have really got, you know, the kind of unctuousness, deliciousness of food yeah. across. Talk about that process. Mm. How are the shoots? How does it all come together? So, like, Lizzie, we were actually... So, basically, in, rewind three years ago mm. when we were writing our first book, which you have a quote on the back ah. of. Um, <laughs> Very like, proud. We, Very proud. Harper Collins, which, um, which, who are a wonderful publisher, they sort of presented us with options for people that we could work with. And we sort of were like, this person's good for this, this person's good for that, this person's great for this. But Lizzie's photos really stood out. There was just mm. something that there was like a realness to them, the, the colour that she managed to achieve yeah, and, yeah. and, and the, the shadows and the way that the, the, the food was, it wasn't like brash and too big. It was kind of subtly beautiful. And we just thought there, there's something special about those photos. So we went with her. The first shoot, we were there every day and uh, we just got a really good working relationship with her. She was mm -hmm. listening to what we were saying mm -hmm. about like, sh like the styling might have been good, but we said, oh, if you just do it this way, it might be, just be a touch yeah. more boshy. Yeah. And uh, just from that first shoot, we were able to form this really fantastic, yeah. wonderful working relationship with her. And uh, that working relationship, is, as Henry says, just gone on and on. Mm -hmm. And it, it's culminated in this. But also she does all the photographs for our products as well. Mm -hmm. She does. And, and we, I would say that Lizzie, hopefully she will keep working with us because she's kind of become our house style yeah. for, yeah. for our printed um, material from, from the books to the products. But also, you know, we're not food stylists. You are an amazing food stylist, <laughs> you lucky person. Yeah. Um, we, we, we do style our, our food for the videos, but it's super accessible, super basic. I, I feel like food styling is something you can properly spend three or four or five, ten years yeah, perfecting, yeah, yeah, yeah. almost like a, an artist, yeah. whereas we're more, much more rough and ready, which is fine for the videos. Mm -hmm. yeah. doesn't really work for the books. Yeah. And also, we'd probably struggle to do you know five six seven recipes yeah, in a, a day lot, a lot, yeah. like these stylists do that was that what you were doing back in the day um yeah we used to when i oh, when God. i worked for jamie oliver it was a lot more than that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. really like 10 12 14 a <laughs> wow. day so it was no but so fun and it's it's, yeah. it, it's it's such a lovely part of the process isn't it i yeah. know yeah with my books when when it comes to life when you start seeing the pictures it's so exciting yeah um i think yeah, i think I, we've we've nailed the video stuff yeah and we we really, really relish the the writing. Mm. 
and the testing and the refining and the creating mm. the book mm. and also the video side of it. But yeah, you put us designing the actual photos for the book, we just wouldn't be as yeah. good no. yeah. as you yeah. would. Yeah. 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 So Well, I think what is great in this, it feels really relaxed. It feels mm. really approachable because sometimes it can feel just a bit, yeah. you know, a bit too much or a bit overstyled and this just feels it feels like you guys it feels like i'm kind of sitting at your table and there's some lovely pictures with your mates in here yes that's so cool gorgeous. isn't it <laughs> yeah i love it it just it just kind of brings it to life really um so yeah um so you talk about kind of the last year a mm. couple of years and how it's been you know crazy old time what has changed for you guys kind of personally or you know or in the business i think mm. you know a lot of people have taken stock haven't they has it sort of drawn focus for you on anything totally we were we we've had this weird working scenario where both of us have lived together and worked together it's intense for what like <laughs> is it eight years it was yeah it was from 2012 until last year yeah. So eight years yeah. we lived I mean, together. Hats off to you guys. <laughs> it's quite a while, is it? It's quite a lot. It? Yeah. That's like longer than some marriages. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. And I think we we developed a way of like dealing with that and making it work. And no doubt it was super helpful with with starting Bosch as a company mm -hmm. as well as as authors, and and running it through essentially the blood, sweat, and tears of the two of us, where we would walk downstairs in the house, see each other, make breakfast pull the phone out, do some Instagram stories yeah, or yeah, some Facebook yeah, yeah, stories yeah. and then do the day all the way through and kind of probably bounce off each other from a work ethic perspective. Mm -hmm. So that's been great. I feel like in 2020, when you couldn't even leave the house, mm -hmm. it was fine, but it, it was enough. Yeah, yeah. M my fiancé was absolutely desperate to move to the yeah, countryside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did. So we Gorgeous. escaped London. The two of us have gone to just outside London on the west. Ian's moved to the west yeah. so we can get in and out to each other quite quickly. We've just embraced this remote way of working. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it feels like a it feels like a step. You're no longer yeah. no longer right side by side, but I guess uh, side by side very much in terms of yeah. um, and I'm sure in communication all yeah. day, every yeah. day. So we we have a, like a daily stand-up uh, where we, we're, like the team, albeit a small team, mm. is uh, is on Zoom, just sort of you know chatting for half an hour mm. about the day that's about to be and the day mm. that was uh, yesterday and our sort of plans. But then, like Henry says, I moved to Shepherd's Bush to be able to get out onto the Great Rush Road mm. to be able to go mm. to Oxford mm. to go and film videos there. So we're actually like see each other probably four mm. times a week anyway. It's it, but it's yeah. yeah you it's were good. mine yesterday. I was. Yeah, we, we were filming. <laughs> I'm here today. Yeah. So we we were doing a chef one chicken loaded fries yesterday oh, there nice. we are. do you know what sarah said i've got that's another thing that happened in the last two years yeah. now i have a girlfriend ah i Hello, love sarah. it <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah we, we made these uh, she was like it's so it's kind of a bit like asian poutine it is asian it, poutine like, oh, yes yeah. it is you should have named it yeah, yeah. 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 she's one chicken loaded fries but yeah anyway mm, really yeah. Yeah. so that's yeah. what we were filming yesterday yeah so yeah. been been lots of changes kind of personally yeah and then you know, professionally, how's it been? Because I, I guess, you know, a lot of your work is, you know, behind, you know, from behind a screen. Mm -hmm. It is giving people, you know, the tools to be able to cook better, to eat better, to kind of live better. So actually, I guess for your guys' business, it's been, you know, it, has it been kind of much of the same? I know you haven't been able to get out mm -hmm. there and do events, but mm -hmm. has has it kind of felt buoyant? Has it felt, you know, yeah. good? Yeah. Yeah, it's been, it's been fine. I wouldn't say it's, it's not been it's the been best time. Fine. Yeah. yeah, we we had an office and we just realised we don't need this office. This office is going to be fallow for the next six months. So mm -hmm. let's just stop using the office. It's just work from home. Mm -hmm. We film at home anyway, so we don't need to be going to this office. And everybody can just be remote. And we'll embrace yeah. this. We like scalable things, yeah. and working remotely feels very scalable, mm -hmm. yeah. very modern. It so is. I've, it's miraculous, it's actually, great. isn't it? It's, it's really great really that the world has changed yeah. like this. Yeah. What we've found now, after about 18 months of being remote, is that we do miss that pressure cooker mm. a little bit of us in the same room multiple days a week mm. with video cameras and other people doing yeah. stuff. So we are about to embrace moving back in uh, to central London. Uh, I can't wait to come and together. visit. Hopefully yeah. you can come and film yeah, with us. Yeah, I feel like that creative, that's what I've missed this year a bit, yeah. that kind of creative um that creative back and forth yeah. you guys have been you've been smashing it anyway and i guess you know you i really see you guys as kind of pioneers of 
the way kind of recipes have been communicated through video on Instagram, on your like crazy Facebook. Is it two, two billion views you've had yeah, now, yeah, guys? Yeah, 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 that's right. How? Not <laughs> yeah. to that. In fact, before this, we were talking about some of the numbers. A million books sold. Yes. Two billion views. I yeah. mean... Two million cakes as well. Two million yeah. cakes. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's just yeah. all the millions. Yeah. This all the is millions. insane, yeah. isn't it's it? Mind boggles about those numbers. I mean, if you imagine a million of anything, it would be a lot of something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, yeah. <laughs> well, like, <laughs> we'd, we'd have to fill several of these rooms with your yeah. million cakes, like, I you, think. You, like a million peas would probably, uh, well, I don't know, how, how much it would be like this no high idea. off the floor. That's like a That's Google a question. interview yeah, question, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how much volume is a million peas? Yeah. Um, but, you know, how does it feel? Because obviously, you know, mm. I, I met you guys very close to kind of the beginning of your journey. You mm. know, I remember speaking to you about Where your, did we meet? When was we it? We met at a HarperCollins... Um, we summer party summer we party. approached you and we're yeah. like look it's oh, Anna Jones let's go and say it, hello it was yeah, so yeah, yeah. fun and then we yeah. went over yeah. to Nigel Slater yeah I we remember we bombarded him yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was very sweet <laughs> you were like here's the boss um, boys and we yeah. were like alright Nigel and he's like oh, I mean, always, starstruck I'm always starstruck by him he's just, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. the legend. absolute don isn't he he's mm. brilliant um but I remember speaking to you about kind of your mission about, yeah. you know, bringing vegan mainstream. And how does it feel now that you've me reached these crazy, crazy, crazy landmarks? Mm. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's, I think it's amazing. I think um, it's it would be very easy to let your ego take over and be like, oh, yeah, it's great. We've sold all these books and had all these views and stuff. But the bottom line is we are fundamentally mission driven. Like we mm. make vegan mm. food. It really because, feels like that yeah, for you guys. Yeah. We want to show people that plant-based food doesn't have yeah. to be boring or whatever. Like we, we want to sort of make vegan food as accessible as possible. So if we as Bosch are having success and people are seeing our videos and buying our books, it means that the vegan movement is moving in the right direction. Mm. And that is like, that kind of underpins everything that we do. So um, yeah, we, 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 we're we all like, it's very, yeah, you can have this inflated self uh, importance or whatever, but then you just sort of like put yourself down a peg or two and be like, actually, no, like we, we carry on going hard. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. yesterday was our first day. Well, because, you you feel as passionate speaking yeah. to you today as you mm. did, you know, you know, at that at that party, however many years ago, and that's yeah. it's, that's know. it, and it, 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 that remains, and that's why I think we've managed to achieve what we've achieved because it's like we do it for other something other than just personal gain, yeah. and it's working yeah. as well. So yeah. when we met you at that party in HarperCollins four four or five years ago, that you couldn't buy vegan food in yeah. the supermarket. Yeah, yeah, there was absolutely. no vegan aisle in the supermarket. Yeah. There was no sausage roll from the main baker. Yeah. Yeah. There were no restaurants really yeah. selling vegan options. Yeah. Whenever you mentioned the word vegan, you had to have an argument with somebody yeah, yeah, or yeah, just yeah, yeah. differ and just keep your opinion silent. Whereas now the world is, especially the United mm. Kingdom, mm. celebrating vegan food. It's everywhere. There's the Veganuary buzz or mm. Vegan January. Mm which is enabling brands to announce new products or restaurants mm. to announce new mm. menus. The world has fundamentally changed and it's so pleasing to see. Yeah, yeah I mean, and, like, and the UK is kind of leading away a bit, yeah. isn't it? Sorry. But yeah, I was just saying say like five years ago or, or four, but however, four years ago, if you had said, oh yeah, can you imagine a time when there would be a vegan burger, the muck plant on every single McDonald's menu? Mm. And mm. as of yesterday, that's now a reality. Mm. I've not had that yet. Or you should go and get one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's make, go you, for make you feel great. It'll be for my about... first McDonald's in about 15 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. if I'm doing it with you guys, yeah. then, it then feels it's okay. allowed. Yeah. <laughs> well, there would be certain people that would be like, why are you eating at McDonald's? Also, KFC have had a, a vegan chicken, chicken nugget, yeah, nugget yeah. now announced as well. Bonkers. And I think it's, you know, I think quite often it can be um, easy to kind of be snobby about, you know, kind of you know these kind of meat brands substitutes getting brands getting involved and you know you know think that they're just jumping on the bandwagon but I think what you guys do brilliantly is kind of you know first of all you lift up the people around you and you think anyone who's Ooh. part of this conversation talking about vegan food talking about more plants you know it's a good thing yeah so there's not that sort of competitiveness Ooh. which I, I've always really mm. appreciated about you guys but also I think your food is really you know you do really smart things like you know take a burger that everyone's 
Americans loves. Take a shepherd's pie, you know, take a chicken tikka masala and 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 you give it your Bosch twist. And mm. I think, you know, that's really part of yeah. your success, that kind of fun, that accessibility, you know, that kind of like, you know, joyful, um, you know, slight, sometimes yeah. slightly indulgent side. But yeah. Obviously, you've got loads of healthy options yeah. as well. How, I mean, how did that kind of concept develop? How, you know, is that just what you love to eat? Mm. I think that we, when we were writing our first book, we were unsure what a cookbook from a social media channel should look like. Right. We yeah. were Bosch. We had a million fans on Facebook and that was it. But we'd got this book deal and we were putting a book together. So a lot of our success had been based on these viral videos mm -hmm. that were kind of crazy and maybe you wouldn't really cook, but okay. they got a lot okay. of views yeah. on Facebook. So we thought for a while about whether we would need to make a book of those kind of recipes. But then we quickly realized that it would be more important for us to focus on staples and essentially create a Bible, mm -hmm. the Bible of mm -hmm. vegan cooking. Mm -hmm. So all of the staples that a meat eater would want to eat would be in this book, mm -hmm. from your fish mm -hmm. and chips to your chili to your pie, Spaghetti. to some obvious salads and falafels to pastas, exactly. Mm -hmm. and. That was where we ended up with Bosch in realizing that we needed to create classics. And we've had yeah. the word, whether it's classics or favorites, in the forefront of our thinking with every single book. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So we tend to try and find the most popular curry today. Yeah. And if we haven't yeah. already yeah. got a recipe yeah. for that, let's make a recipe for yeah. that. Yeah. Or the most popular Middle Eastern dish or, you know, what? How can we get favorites baked into everything? Mm. And mm -hmm. now that started to come across, not mm. just in our books, but also we've got a range of ready meals and, um, you know, we're focusing yeah. on what are the most popular meals that yeah. people yeah, want to so buy. It's so exciting, these Veganize ready the meals. Goodies. Veganize the favorites. Yeah. And that, that's been our mission. And we still do, don't get, get me wrong, we still do some of the crazy stuff mm -hmm. in video form. Mm -hmm. And I think for the next year, we'll probably go a little bit more into those crazy viral videos that maybe wouldn't make a book. I think we all need a bit of fun. We, yeah, we all need a bit, we more all need fun. A bit yeah, of fun exactly. at the moment. Um, but yeah, the, all your, your products, I mean, amazing. You can buy them in mm. all of the supermarkets. Yeah. And I guess those, you know, that's another way of getting these favorites, these classics mm. out into the world, isn't it? Because yeah. I know your cakes, which, you know, I love the lemon drizzle, the chocolate, and you, your ready meals have just... Yeah just launched yeah. they, recently so we've been working diligently in the background for about a year on those ready meals we've partnered with a really fantastic company that have got this massive factory in wales 900 people working there wow. really good food development team and uh, we sat down and again same process with the first book we were thinking oh should we just do something that people have never seen before and then we thought well absolutely not let's give them exactly what they want but just make it really bloody good and um, so we just went to our books and just thought, this is the most popular recipe from this book, this book, this book. Let's make those into ready meals. And that's what they've done. And they, um, they're they selling very, very well. Mm. Like, it's, it's awesome. And they're only av currently available in Morrison's. Okay. But uh, there's some pretty advanced talks going on for two more supermarkets. Oh, so fingers yeah. crossed they'll be yeah. out yeah. everywhere before. But the, the nice thing about that is, it's you know, it comes back to the mission of, trying to get as many people to eat plants as possible. Yeah. We're not here to turn everybody vegan at all. Yeah. It's yeah. just making flexi options available because yeah. mm. part of yeah. the problem is availability. And if you are going to order convenience food, ready meals, we should make it available at a decent price. Yeah. Ours are healthy. They're not mm -hmm. jacked full of salt or sugar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're just as we would cook them. And they're plant-based, so they're better for the planet. Mm. As far as possible, we make the packaging mm. recyclable. Mm. There's some little bits that can't be recyclable yet. Yeah, it's really tough. As isn't soon it? as they can, they will. Yeah. 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 Um, but it, it is literally the next part of our mission is getting food to people everywhere, wherever mm. they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It's fun. Well, yeah. And so let's talk a bit about some of the recipes mm. in here because, you know, that's Excellent. what this is all yes, about, please. isn't it? That's what this is all about. <laughs> yeah. There were, uh, well, there were lots and lots that jumped out at me, actually. Um, I made your general, is it general sal? General sal tofu. General yeah. sal yeah. tofu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ian loves that one. I love ago. that recipe, man. It's great. Um, yeah, actually, my, my husband, John, picked it out because he's a, he's a sucker for kind of a sticky, Chinese-y mm, sort of tofu yeah. situation. Who isn't? Um, yeah, who isn't? And we absolutely loved it. It was, you know, it was it was really, what page is it on? I was going to have a look here. Was um, it 90? Was it? Or was it <coughs> we, we 80, actually, yeah. yeah. Um, 
Yes, absolutely loved it. Um, we had some greens on the side, some rice, but it was, and the sauce, I yeah. mean, mm. absolutely banging. Yeah, um, it's got, um, what, it's like lots of, it's quite, it's quite basic, but I think that's why it works so nicely. It's got the sugar, yeah. it's got the acid, it's got the uh, the punchiness from the garlic, and it's just got that like crunch, that texture. Yeah. Uh, with this, this is the one. silky sauce and yeah. crunchy tofu. Lovely. So good. With, yeah. Um, yeah, loads of sesame seeds, loads mm. of dried chili. Yeah. I really, really, really love that one. But on my list to cook are um, your healthy Donna. I mean, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So good. Yeah. I need to find a picture here because I just, I mean, yes. come on, guys. Look at that. It looks absolutely amazing. Yeah. So there's a funny um, story about this one. We, um, it's inspired by, it probably says it in the book, mm -hmm. uh, it's inspired by What the Pitta. Yes. Does it say that in there? It does. It yeah, 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 we, yeah, yeah. Whenever we take inspiration from someone, we've taken inspiration from uh, you before, uh, and we always like to name check the person. Yeah, um, you've got to do it. So, uh, so what the pitta? They're this wicked London street food doner kebab place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That started pretty much when we started Bosch, mm. and we we realised we wanted to make this awesome kebab, but there was this kind of TikTok trend around bread meat yeah. where you are basically, you know, kind of making seitan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're yeah. doing it from flour. Yeah. So you go through the very laborious process of taking flour, making a dough, and then washing the dough underwater mm -hmm. for about 15 minutes. You're just rinsing it and wow, washing yeah. away the starch and you're just left with the protein. You then kind of beat that, steam it, and um, <laughs> fry it in gorgeous yeah. spices and you end up, end up with something which... It's somewhere between a kind of fatty meat texture mm. and a really delicious crouton, which yeah. might not yes, sound that appealing. It <laughs> does have a, a crouton vibe to it, but it, it makes the most wonderful protein. Yeah, man, it's, it's good. Delicious. And then when you couple it up with what the uh, the couscous and the salad and the olives and the chilies, mm. very delicious. Such a delicious. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a bit of a labour. It's a labour of love. Yeah. So I I, I, I reckon if you're going to make that one. Mm. Double it, and then you'll yeah, have it for the yeah, next yeah, day. Yeah, totally. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's smart. I think, yeah. There's, it, it's miraculous, though, isn't it? When you think about it, you know, that you can take some strong white bread flour mm. and you can basically yes. go Wait. through some processes. The science of it is yeah, is yeah, actually yeah. really cool and really smart, yeah. and it can turn into something that you know can sit on a delicious plate of food like that. Yeah, yeah. I feel, um, yeah. My husband, since he became vegetarian, about I don't know, 15 years ago or so. Nice. He's definitely missed that, that, mm, that, that, that moment. Bite. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I think, I think we'll definitely be doing that. Good. Um, the tacos as cosados. Oh yeah, my yeah, yeah, yeah. goodness. That one just looks insane. So they're incredible. And the, um, I think in Spanish, acorazados means armored. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they are essentially soldiers tacos, armored tacos, yes. where you would, just double up the taco yeah. <laughs> and then eat it <laughs> so are. that it doesn't break. Yeah, Because yeah, a taco yeah, yeah. can be quite a flimsy thing. Yeah. And, you know, so it's a double wrap taco, taco absolutely delicious. Yeah, yeah. well, the, they, they do that a lot in LA, I think. Lots of lots of the takeout tacos have kind of two tacos yeah, 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 underneath. Yeah. And yeah, then, just in case. You know, it, exactly, yeah. just in case. Like when you, taco. Get, you get a plastic cup for your pint of beer and you ask for two. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> a, <laughs> not yeah, very environmentally yeah, friendly. Yeah, but. yeah. But yeah, it, you're right. In, in LA, there's a lot of Mexican food. What's mm. that place? That, is it Le... Gracias Madre? Gracias oh, Madre. Oh, that's incredible. Been, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's got yeah, yeah, a real yeah. LA yeah. feel to it. Yeah, all vegan. In, uh... And that was actually yeah. really flying yeah. the flag. That must have been there 15 years or uh, so. So it's flying or... the flag, yeah. flag for yeah. vegan food yeah. um, for a long time. The, the original was in San Francisco, actually. I'm, I was Yeah, right? okay. I went there years ago. It used to be in the, in the nice. kind of... Real, I think it was in the mission in the kind of oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah um, okay and it used to be a bit of a hippie spot but yeah I love nice. that place yeah mm. it love it love it love it, it, love it. Start there. yeah exactly um and in these you make kind of vegan chorizo right, situation yeah. red That's... kidney beans at the base mm. yeah I mean sounds proper delicious and also the salsa that goes with that is incredible super zippy super zingy well worth yes. trying love love yum, love yum. that one of my favorites in this book I would love to talk about is the um, the curries in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've um, we've with our old book Bish Bash Bosh, we started using this technique where you make a separate curry stock, yeah, like, kind of like an that. onion cool. soup so yeah. that you blend up. It's a proper like British Indian restaurant style. Mm -hmm, so it's a, mm -hmm, like you mm -hmm. like they would do on Brick Lane. Yes, yes. You get a thick, creamy curry, but they make it super quickly because they've already got 
They've got the base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, they yeah. just chuck that in with your meat or your veg and your spices and you can get a curry in 10 minutes. Mm. So we use that technique and it's a great thing to do if you want to feed your freezer. Yes. So right now, for example, I have five 500 gram pouches of frozen curry stock curry in my freezer. There it There's is the right curry now. Stock. It's so good. You portion that up, whack that in your freezer, and then you can cook a curry from scratch within 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Super easy. Mm -hmm. um, so we, in this book, we have a vindaloo. Mm -hmm. You know, it's obviously that kind of, you've got that garlic flavor, you've got the vinegar flavor, and all of those spices. It's made with, uh, is it tempeh, I think? Tempeh, yeah. vindaloo, yep. Super delicious, super flavorful, crazy hot. But the flavor <laughs> kind of rides out the heat a little yeah, bit. Yeah, We've yeah. also got a tofu madras, which uses the yeah, same stock. Yeah, exactly. slightly less heat. Absolutely delicious. Yes. Absolutely. And the Balti uses it as well. The Balti uses yep. the same stock. So you've got three different curries using the same stock. Yeah, and then really you've smart. got the um, chana masala. Yes. And when we were working on the chana masala, if you look for a chana masala recipe online, you'll typically find, you know, get your tin of chickpeas, yeah. get your tin tomatoes, get your spices, put them all together. Mm. That's not really how you would make it if yeah, you're in yeah, India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're in India, you'd be doing some, well, essentially a variation on what we've done here, which is to start with raw chickpeas, uh, mm. dried chickpeas, which mm. are cheap, mm -hmm. live forever on your shelf. They mm -hmm. are like the cheapest. So yeah. cheap, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they'll last for decades probably yeah, if you're yeah. careful. <laughs> um, you boil them, you add some tea bags and you add some baking soda, which kind of combined cook the chickpeas correctly, but without drying them out on the inside. And then you stew them down and then you use that water and you add the spices to that water. And then you add some, you know, onions and garlic and, you know, all of that goodness. And you get something which is proper, incredible, a thick brown gravy. Yeah, and it just delicious. tastes delicious. And you're building yeah, that flavor. Really you're building the flavor. Draining away all of that goodness. You don't lose yeah. the flavor. The chickpeas. Exactly. What are the I've never known tea bags in, that is. Yes. I do the baking soda, but I'm going to stick some tea yeah, bags yeah, in yeah, with yeah, my yeah. chickpeas next <laughs> yeah. time. And tea bags. They're going to help to uh, add some flavor, add some richness, and also help them cook really well. Yeah. All the tips, guys. Yeah. I'm really <laughs> learning today. I can't imagine we can um, give you any tips well, that you don't know. I can say you can because, you know, I, I, I picked up lots lots from this book, actually. And I, you know, I love these curries. I love that they're kind of all sandwiched together in the book so that you could cook one. Or, you know, if you've got mates coming over, you mm. can, you know, especially with your kind of curry stock, you can really easily make yes. two or three. Which well, exactly. Yeah. Because you, with, you, don't, you normally just make one, don't you? Yeah. Mm. And that's what I always miss because, mm. you know, the, the joy of kind of going to your favorite Indian restaurant is that you get. Yeah, the pickles, all the bits. you get all yeah. the curries, yeah. you get all the breads. Totally. But sometimes it can feel like a massive hassle. Mm -hmm. But you've kind of you've hacked that for us, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Um, Ian, what's your what would be your kind of standout recipe? In here, oh, do you know what I really like? There's a crispy Persian rice cake, oh, yes. which is like a tardig, right? Yes. And uh, I think that it, it took a little while to perfect it, but we nailed it. I just think crispy rice is such a yeah, uh, lovely it texture, is. Um, and it, so it's basically crispy rice that's got um, turmeric yogurt to, uh, that you, you, you kind of fry, and then you have roasted vegetables that you put inside, and you top them with more rice, and then you sort of like roast it like that, and then flip it out on its Self and what you're left with is this big kind of golden dome that's <laughs> full of lovely roasted vegetables and the flavors are fantastic and they work really well with hummus yes. and uh, yeah I, th I think it that's is. one of my favorites. That is and, and it's you know amazing that you've got a recipe for that because it's quite a skill, isn't it? Yes. But if you can talk people through mm, yeah. the kind of steps, yeah, yeah. Know, one I, by one, I've got. A, wonderful Persian friend who's kind of you know taught me to cook this over the years and you know she insists that it's just her mom's pan mm -hmm. and okay, you know the and, perfect and, pan. yeah <laughs> but but I've tried it at home and, and it works and and, and and it works but this all the all the all the flavor combinations in yeah. here I mean the you know all the spices the walnuts the sultanas the pistachios yeah. mm. I'm all about that. Yeah, so it's quite a difficult, it's not difficult, but it's it's a little bit tricky. But then there are some really, really simple recipes in there. I mean, there's one, like, I made it the other day, it's it's tin tomato pasta sauce. Yeah. <laughs> but you get, you get literally tin tomatoes, you drain off the chunks of tomato from the juice that's in the tin, roast the... Um, the, the chunks of tomato to pull as much flavor yeah, out as possible nice. and then sort of cook the sauce separately, blend them both together. And what you're left with is, is a tomato sauce that is like genuinely delicious. Genius. I've mm. never heard of that before. Yeah, but, it's, you know, but, cooking tomatoes intensifies them. I've also heard that cooking tomatoes, actually tomatoes are one of the only 
vegetables, fruits, they're a fruit, aren't they? Yeah, Always yeah I guess so, yeah, yeah. That actually is better for you. The nutrition's better for you if it's cooked. If it's cooked. Really? So, Interesting. amazing. Interesting. Yeah. You, you know, that's, okay. that has been cooked twice. And, yeah. yeah, and think about think about the um, the like budget nature of that yeah, dish. I mean, yeah, how yeah. tin tins you can get for 18p. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Exactly, because so. lots of people talk about, you know, <clears throat> roasted tomato sauces, but that requires you buying a couple of kilos yes, of exactly. tomatoes, yeah. which is prohibitive for some people. You know, and you can only really do in the summer. But that's such a good, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm going to give that a go, guys. Give it a well. <laughs> I've got a another go. suggestion for yeah. you. Yes. So it is, one of my other favourites is the hummus with Mexican you know beef. That was on the hummus. This yes. is a big one. So you did a video for that, did you? Yeah. I, I saw it pop up yesterday. That's yeah. right. Nice looks really I edited good. that myself on the phone, which well is done. now the way well we work. <laughs> so we wanted to challenge ourselves to use TVP which yes. is textured vegetable protein, as yeah, you know. Yeah, and it's, yeah, yeah. I think it's the essentially soybean husks. Yeah. So kind of protein, but leftover protein, which is then dried. But you can use that in a sausage mix as a source mm -hmm. of protein or whatever. It's a weird health food shop ingredient that we would never have previously looked at as yeah. boss. We always try to mm -hmm. avoid that stuff, mm -hmm. but it's super cheap. It's dried, so it'll yeah. live on your shelf for ages. And what we challenged ourselves to do was to come up with a recipe that would make TVP taste mm. good. Mm. We want to bring back TVP. TVP. So, yeah, it's, it is quite miraculous. It is. It's amazing it. stuff. Mad. Yeah, mm. it's definitely nuclear holocaust food. So, so with this <laughs> Let's recipe... Let's hope we're a few yeah, years yeah. of that, hey? <laughs> Fingers crossed. So with this recipe, you... Um, you take the TVP and it's actually inspired by... what well, It was a British restaurant that's mm -hmm. now, sadly, no longer with us, called Hummus Bros. Oh, I hummus remember, remember that them? place. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So one of their best-selling dishes was hummus with Mexican beef. And they had this thing they would do where they would always do a swirl in the top of the hummus and then they'd load it with stuff. Nice, So yeah. it felt like a meal rather than just a dip. Just a dip, So yeah. inspired by that, we made this Mexican beef recipe, made it completely vegan. But you essentially just... You soak this TVP in these wonderful flavors. You've got some miso in there. You've got some nutritional yeast or nooch in there and some stock, some other flavors. And you saute that and then you cover it with so much spice. It's crazy. Mm. You've got like a couple of tablespoons of smoked paprika, mm. chili, cumin, coriander, and some garlic. Fry that and bubble it away in that stock till all that stock disappears. And you're left with the most incredible, rich, smoky, flavoursome yeah, Mexican-style yeah. beef that you spread on top of the hummus. Yeah, amazing. And a little bit of salad, flatbread. That's all you need there for you your go. dinner, That's isn't it? it. Perfect. It's delicious. And I think that is one of the things... You know, hummus is really one textured, isn't it? So yes. Yes. having something else on top on that top. gives you some crunch, that gives you some different dimensions yeah, is definitely. such a good thing. And of course, we can't talk about hummus without mentioning the old Bosch classic, Hummus Pasta. Oh, yeah, Hummus Pasta. <laughs> <laughs> We've got an updated yeah. version here. Oh, you know, so Hummus Pasta, we popped, uh, popped that onto our social media channels maybe two or three years ago. It went mental, like got really, really popular. Um, and it had never been in a book before, so we thought we'd include it in this because it, when you make your own hummus from a tin of chickpeas in, for that recipe, it's, it's quite cheap. So like, yeah, yeah, it now's is. the time. But yeah. it's an upgraded recipe, it as is. you say. I'm impressed that you spotted yeah. that. Oh, yeah. The, the previous recipe was kind of like get hummus and pasta and mix them. <laughs> and stick it in. Um, but in this, we yeah. actually kind of saucify the hummus a little bit more, yeah. loosen it. Um, yeah. Yeah. We actually had, so it's not just us in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. When we're testing these books, sometimes we'll get our mates in to help us. There's a lot to get through. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had a friend of ours called Luke in the I kitchen, know Luke. who you know, yeah, Luke I Robinson. I worked with him at 15. Shout out to Luke. What yeah. a great guy, lovely. He's a legend. And uh, he was working with us on this book. Uh, as well as on the previous one. Mm -hmm. And he, we worked with him on getting that kind of looser, more Italian style. Yeah, and mm -hmm. he, that's exactly what he did. Yeah. He that's his, that's he does. his thing, isn't that's it? That's his thing. He's so good he at it. He just got the, 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 just the liquid levels perfect. And yeah. I would say that's like, that essentially is a vegan carbonara. Yeah, yeah it is, yeah. isn't it? Delicious. Well, I have to say, when when I first saw you put hummus with pasta, I was like, guys. Hey, what are you doing? No way. <laughs> You're crazy. This, this, this is not going to work. Yeah, but, right. um, but John, my husband, who is a huge hummus fan, was like, yeah, let's give it a whirl. And I mean, it's, it, it does the job. I don't know why I was such a snob about it, guys. <laughs> That's what I want to say. I want to publicly apologize yeah, to you guys. Um, but yeah, it's delish. Um, 
a hummus pasta. Man, no, no, it's not. It. it makes no sense, so, but it also is genius. Tell me a bit more about that kind of, you know, creative mm. recipe creation process. Yeah. You know, if you work with other people, how it works between the two yeah, of yeah. you guys, because I'm fascinated by that. It, ha it works differently for every yeah, recipe yeah, writer yeah. I've ever spoken to. We are um, super rigorous in being across everything. Mm -hmm. So um, we've always made sure that we were writing the recipes and sometimes we've had people to help us to test those recipes. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we, I, I guess the first few books was just every bit of it came out of us. It did. And we would get extra hands in. So we worked with, um, we worked with some chefs that we knew to come in and help us get through the volume of testing that yeah, we needed to yeah, do yeah. for the first few books. Because um, recipes have to be tested like, a few times, yeah, don't five, they? Yeah, five you know, times It's not enough to cook yeah. it once and think that's no, a banger. Definitely because not. Other people will do other things, yeah. won't they? They will. They will make mistakes that you might not, or they will, exactly. you know, make changes, or they will misread a line. So yeah, testing yeah. is totally key, isn't it? so important. And you've got to, you know, you let's say we would write a recipe. If one of us, and we both do about half ourselves, mm -hmm. if one of us were to sit down and write a recipe. So for example, one of the curries I might have written, one of those curries in the curry stock. I sit down, I write it. We then cook it. It will mm -hmm. either be us, or maybe Luke, or, or, or someone yeah, else will yeah. come and help us out cook it, taste it, and then we have a discussion between all of us about where is the flavor, Tweak. does it work, what are the problems, could mm -hmm. the recipe be simplified, are the things mm -hmm. that could trip people up. And we really will then always end up doing a second cook or a third mm -hmm. cook. Mm -hmm. Some of them get tested four or five times yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have hit the stage now where we're so busy that sometimes we'll get other people to help us with the writing as well. Yeah. Um, but we're we're also always very across the idea in the first instance, then viewing the recipe after it comes through, then we'll cook it, then we'll refine it. So yes, it. we're in every bit of the book. Yeah, well, we can t I can tell that from yeah. the way you talk about the recipes. You're, yes. You yeah. live and breathe these recipes, yeah. don't you? And yeah. I think, you know, that is testament to, to, to you guys mm. and part of why, you know, You've been so successful is yeah. you know you, i think you care about you care about every full stop in this book yes. don't you yeah. that's you know that's so so clear to see it um, kills us when there's an error and there's, there's oh my god there's and there two. always Sometimes there is an error there always is one yeah. in every book of mine there painful. has been an error and i think <laughs> yeah. it's a nuisance isn't it really yeah. any any big when ones when i work for no uh, the, well, there is quite a bad <laughs> um desiccated you coconut we'll tell you, we'll is quite else. light obviously yeah and in one recipe in my first book it says 200 grams of desiccated yeah. coconut not 20 grams yeah which that's is about three or difference. four packets from the supermarket yeah, 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 yeah. so yeah. um that was a howler but i think that just went in yeah. the editing process when yeah, it was being yeah, laid yeah. out um but there's always one or two yeah. have you got any uh, any howlers yeah there's one howler in there if you just took, if you go to the moussaka Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, which was a bit of a nuisance. So basically, the moussaka is uh, a, a lovely dish. It takes a long time to make. It's in yeah. a huge lasagna tray, like serves a lot of people, 12 people. But in there, it says serves two. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, oh, God, somewhere, somewhere. And like we basically missed the one out, which yeah. is not yeah. good. But hey, you one know. One digit but can make a big difference. It can make a huge difference. But yeah, at two, 2,200, the one digit is key. So the <laughs> exactly. zero is key there. Yeah. But yeah. I, I think that, you know, recipe books are so interactive, aren't they? Mm. And I think that's one thing that people who perhaps haven't worked on them or, you know, been involved in them yeah. don't realise is, you know, if you write a novel, it's it's just a, you know, I, I have yeah. enormous respect for people who write novels. Novelists. But every part of these books kind of has to be, you have to be really, really, really tight on. Yeah, yeah you do. It's an interactive thing. It's something that you know people take into their homes, and then you know they play with, they react on, they spend their money they on. Spend don't money they? on yes. products, yeah. So, so it's you know I know how important it is, it is to yeah. you guys that you yeah. um, get this right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, go on. Ian. I was going to say, so if, if anybody is going to make moussaka. It's not for two. Yeah. <laughs> twelve people. Yeah. Well, it's better than the other way around, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's it true. said twelve people. And then you've got and then for two. it's only enough for two that's and true. you've invited all your mates yeah. around. At least you'll you, you can give some to your neighbours, yeah, yeah. you'll yeah. have leftovers. Um someone from our Team Bosch Facebook group yeah. thankfully yeah. pointed that out to us and we're very grateful for yeah. to them uh, for spotting that and we're gonna have it changed in the next edition. Well that yes. I think that is the wonderful thing now, isn't it? About, you know, being able to really have this direct conversation with the people who cook your recipes and, you mm. know, watch your videos. And, you know, it means you can be really nimble. It means you can react. Yeah. It means you can really write to what people want, doesn't it? Yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we are, we, we are so lucky to have that um, kind of line of communication with fans, as you say. And um, sometimes we'll, we'll we'll put a story out. That You know, the story te- thing where you pop, it's like, ask a question. What, would you prefer this or this? It's like they can dictate what video they want to watch because that's the mm-hmm. recipe that we'll cook next. And sometimes uh, we, we've asked people, would you prefer this for a pasta for the next book or this for a pasta for the next book? They tell us and it goes in. So it is like literally mm-hmm. like a, a, a marvellous tool for us. Yeah. Um, such fantastic data to give mm. the people essentially what they're asking for. Mm. It's a conversation, isn't mm. it? It's a conversation yeah. and it's, yeah. you know, we're so lucky to be kind of writing recipes and books in this time where we can yeah. have this it's conversation. Awesome. I think it's, you know, you know, 10 years ago, mm. less than that, probably five yeah. years ago, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have had that. It's, it's also weird with cookbooks because obviously like everything's going more and more digital. But I feel that cookbooks, I don't know if because if, we're in the cookbook space, but it just feels as if cookbooks are having a real moment. Mm. Like there's lots of wonderful authors out there and it's like fantastic books, like new techniques. You walk into every single bookshop and it's like, it seems like the cookbook section is just growing. Yeah, um, yeah it's, 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 yeah, cookbooks are marvelous, aren't they, really? Yeah, they're yeah. beautiful things yeah. because c- cooking on your phone is inherently just a bit more difficult. Mm. Trying to mm. pause it, you know, pause it at the yeah. exact moment. Yeah. I think there's real value in cookbooks. Yeah, yeah 100%. I, I think there really are. I think there's something about food that requires it to be tactile, that mm. requires mm. it you to hold something in your hand and yeah. feel it. And, you know, I always, you know, if I'm cooking other people's recipes, then I always cook from cookbooks. I mean, I yeah. never follow the recipe to the end. Of <laughs> course terrible. you don't. Know. <laughs> yeah. I'm terrible. You freestyle it, I can recipes. imagine. But, you know, your general South tofu, I did follow. I, oh, I amazing. I followed to the tea. So, Thank you. Um, yeah, and the book itself, I love it because it's kind of, it's like an all-day situation, isn't it? You've got a lovely breakfast and bun- brunch chapter um, with lots of things I would love to eat for breakfast in here. Oh, those pancakes are good. The pancakes look f- really they're good. They're super-duper yeah. fluffy, though. Pulp Fiction Oof. blueberry pancakes, yes. Yeah. Yes. I had those on Christmas Day Did you? with my we family. We had those yeah. on Christmas Day. Oh, we had nice. blueberry pancakes. It's like a kick back to our time living in America we kind of like pretend mm. we're on a beach in California by nice. having blueberry pancakes <laughs> it's a weird thing for Christmas though yeah. right it's not traditional no. Christmas breakfast no but I think you know as is the same with you guys mm. like my family's the way we eat has changed since yeah. we've all become vegetarian or vegan yeah um so we've had to kind of make our own food traditions which yeah, i yeah. actually really love and yeah. really enjoy so yeah. i'm sure yeah. it's like the mushroom yeah. wellington that we did a few years ago yeah. that's become a tradition for an awful lot of people it's just because yeah. if you're taking away the big dirty great turkey that's like yeah. looks kind of impressive and it's golden and steaming and it has this wonderful smell if you take that away you need something to replace yeah. it so a big yeah. dome of mushroom pastries <laughs> like, yeah. as good it looks like well, much better yeah, i would yeah. argue yeah, yeah. much better Delicious. and and i think you know i think that's you know what you have given to people some you know alternatives and mm. i think especially you know with the other side of christmas now but that moment when you know there's the, the there's a family where you know the vegan you know kids yeah. have come over <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah, someone yeah. wants something it's nice to be able to hold people's hands through that isn't it because mm. obviously you're writing for people who live, you know, a vegan lifestyle, but you're also writing for people who, you know, need some solutions um, totally. and need some options. Yeah. yeah. There, there's statistics coming out left, right and centre now about how many people are trying vegan or a bit more vegan friendly mm-hmm. or planning to eat more vegan in 2022 and how many people were looking to have a vegan Christmas. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of people having first time vegan Christmases mm, this mm, year. Mm, mm. So hopefully quite a few of them had the Bosch mushroom yeah, Wellington, yeah, whether they knew yeah, it or yeah. not. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well we had we had well we always have a fully vegan Christmas. Nice. But yeah. Yeah. It's nice. It's nice to you know, it's an honour, isn't it, to think that people mm. are sitting around on Christmas Day and they've totally. got that thing that you came up with in your kitchen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's a dream. Yeah, yeah, it yeah it's really wild. Um, so you've got chapters in here on comfort food, food for friends. You know, how I always find it quite difficult to work out how I'm going to kind of organise the yes. cookbook. Um, mm. did, but did these come quite naturally to you? They feel like real yeah. parts of your personality of Bosch of of how you live your life Mm. what we always try and do it's quite geeky how we design these cookbooks (laughs) okay we'll let you in uh, to the the secret but we both in our previous job we were working in essentially a technology company doing software and my background you know we're we're passionate self-taught cooks but Mm. unlike you we didn't have like 10 years 
in the biz, we were building websites or apps or, or whatever. So we take quite a weird software driven approach to, um, to structuring the books, which is to try and make the navigation as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. We don't want people to struggle to know what chapter a recipe is okay, in. Yeah. There's this concept from McKinsey, so geeky, called- I love it, I love it's, this. Uh, it's, it's, it's looking at cookbooks from a completely yeah, yeah, different yeah, 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 perspective. Yeah. This concept is MECE, which is, it means M-E-C-E, -E, mutually exclusive, collectively exhaustive. So together, the categorization should be collectively exhaustive. So it should cover all the things that you yes, might want to yes, eat, yes. but each category should be mutually exclusive. Yeah, so there's yeah. no crossover. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. That's the plan. Right. I'm about to start writing my next my next yeah. book, so I'm going to get it I'm, Macy. I'm get you yeah. Bit of Macy. You're <laughs> um, yeah. Well, amazing. So, <laughs> guys, what is next for you guys? What are your hopes and dreams for 2022? And you know, this can be personal. Mm. You're going to mm -hmm. get a cat. Do you want a new, Ooh. you know, pantry? Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. it could it could be what's next for Bosch. I'd love to hear. Mm. Well, yeah, we were actually discussing goals just yesterday, weren't we? We were. Um, one of the goals that we have is that we want to bolster our digital offering. Obviously, we're good on social. Yeah. Um, and our website's pretty good, but it could be way better. So what we're going to do is really like slam that website and get it well, to amazing. become a really fantastic resource for people. Can't yeah. wait and for part, that. And part of that digital offering will hopefully be an app. So mm -hmm. we're thinking really strongly about the potential of, of, of building an app that just becomes a great resource for all vegan recipes. So that is one big thing that we'll be working on this year. Yeah. Amazing. We, we're really excited to get together so that we have got this central location yeah. in London and start filming more, making more videos for people for free because that's our mission. But also get a few other chefs working with us as well. Yeah. Mm. So we want to find some more really talented plant-based chefs with different ideas with different styles yeah, to come and feature with us on the boss channel that's going to be a really big focus yeah. for our next year and obviously we've, we will keep writing books at least for the next five years mm. we will keep making videos but i think expanding more internationally is going to be really important yeah. for us so we've already got our food available in the uk but we would love to find a way to our, our audience is international so Absolutely, we'd love to get yeah. but get food out to people who like boss in australia mm. or like boss in america that's yeah, the plan. yeah, mm. amazing. And the book's out in America in May, isn't it? In May, so yeah. So we'll be heading over there and doing a, a bit of a tour. tour. Oh hopefully. my goodness. Yeah. Be good. yeah. Hopefully, some people want us. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, oh, hopefully. They definitely will. <laughs> we'll see. They definitely yeah. will. Well, just so much, yeah, so much exciting mm, stuff yeah, going fun. on. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> I mean, you and your new country pad, you and your city pad. Yeah, it's yeah, be, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good. It'll be yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be. Well, I am a huge fan of you guys, as you know, and all that you do. Likewise. Maximum, yeah, likewise, maximum really. respect to you. And this book, you know, I know is going to be very well used and very splattered. It might be my husband cooking from it because, as I say, <laughs> I, I find it impossible to follow it. a recipe. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, definitely taken a huge amount of inspiration from this. So good. Congrats Thank on it. So Congrats much. on everything. It's just been so nice to have a chat. Yeah, it's lovely to it? hang out with you. You're a proper inspiration to us. And um, even the first time we met you, we were kind of starstruck. Uh, yeah. So it's lovely to be able to share this journey with you. Oh, yeah. love it. Yeah, and hopefully we'll be seeing you again before too long. Two years. I know. Was too long. It's been too long, yeah. hasn't it? It's been too long. Mm -hmm. We need to kind of just make sure this happens more often. Yes. It doesn't have to be filmed. No, no. no. <laughs> but when we get our new studio, when we get our new studio, the office, we'll we'll uh, we'll have a little opening party yeah, thing. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah get yeah. a few people down and a little soiree. It's good to get yeah. you yeah. Yeah. Vegan food. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's going to be amazing. Oh well, thank you guys. <laughs> I just love chatting to you. Thanks, Thanks for you. having us. Um, what a pleasure. Cheers.